Hello, I'm Margaret Atwood. What was the last great Canadian film you saw? I'm Jennifer Baitrol, and I am asking, what was the last great Canadian film that you saw? I started thinking about the subject of debt for a number of reasons, but among them was my puzzlement over a turn of phrase. He's paid his debt to society. What happens when people don't pay their debts, or can't pay their debts, or won't pay their debts? Uh, the topic of indebtedness, um, how did the both of you become interested in exploring that? It was also a book called Payback, Debt and the Shadow Side of Wealth. And when my publishers heard that I was going to be writing with this, I think they freaked out because they thought I was going to write a book on economics. But of course I wasn't. Doing that, I was writing on what we might call pre-economics or the foundation of economics, which is human exchanges and how we, how we exchange everything from good deeds to revenge. Uh, and debt, the money kind, is part of that, but it's by no means, it's just the tip of the iceberg. So, for instance, after this interview is over, you will say thank you very much, and we will say thank you very much, and we will then be even in the debt-credit relationship of thank yous. But Margaret's right in that money itself is just a symbol of exchange. So if you go back to, to, to that pre-economic idea, money just became a way of um, exchanging things, of, of, of um, you know, actualizing that exchange that already existed. And when you think about all of those different ideas of owing and being owed that are certainly explored in the book in great and rich detail, um, the question became, well, what, what kind of stories can we tell in this film that show people what it feels like to live with that when the balance is, is when it's not balanced, when, when the creditor and debtor relationship is completely out of whack uh, and there's a huge kind of uh, discrepancy. The sequence about prison, the origin of the word penitentiary. Um, even in that context, we sort of lost that meaning. You don't go to jail to to pay a debt to society anymore. You go to jail to be. It, it's purely about punishment and purely about getting rid of you as a society. But the punishment is considered to be somehow paying a debt to society. Mm -hmm. That because you have done a, a crime, you owe somebody something. Mm -hmm. uh, now the logical thing would be if there were a victim for you to have to repay the victim but and uh, in s certain penal codes for instance the uh, the old uh, the old old testament eye for a eye tooth for a tooth thing you know it was a pretty simple on the table um, you did this you have to pay that and if it's a body part <laughs> 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 and that's what we're that's what we're dealing with in the first story that Jennifer goes into which is the Albanian blood feud which under their code if you um, do a harm to a family by harming one of its members, you and your entire family are on the line for a, a death. Uh, so you can't go outside your, your own fence or else uh, you can be killed in, in retaliation. The film doesn't go into it, but uh, was there any discussion at all between the, um, the, the folks in Albania in terms of maybe how this situation would be handled in Canada, let's say, where, you know, the police would come, you would go to a court of law, you'd go to jail for X amount of years, as opposed to how they do it. But, you know, Albania is, when you go to the south in the cities, it's a perfectly sophisticated modern European city, like any other. It's only when you go up into the mountains, into the isolated areas, where the police can't come because it, there's no road, you know. Um, th that's when you get into these situations where there is self-administered justice. And this code, the Canoon Code, is, a, is an ancient code of behavior that governs um, relationships in, uh, and, and still exists in these pockets in the North. And what's interesting about it is that, I mean, what I find interesting is that it's not just your um, guilt uh, for a crime committed. As Margaret says, your whole, anybody who shares the same blood as the perpetrator of the crime, if they're male, can be liable for it. So you do have this, these situations where whole families are kind of paralyzed, where the father, the son, the cousins, the brothers, everybody is trapped inside because if they go out there, they're liable to be killed. You do have Conrad Black, who uh, some people would argue perhaps uh, justifiably was uh, got the punishment he deserves. Other people like uh, Paul Muhammad, who you mentioned, who 
um, is uh, almost a tragic figure. He's genuinely, genuinely, deeply, deeply affected and sorry and emotional about, about what happened to him. How did you uh, choose your subjects for the film? How did you find them? I think Jennifer wanted to show sort of two angles on that, uh, the whole who does it serve to put people lock them up somewhere you know some people obviously you want to do that because they would kill people if you um, let them out uh, but but what does it who does it serve uh, to put for instance white collar folks uh, into this very expensive <laughs> very expensive thing uh, and indeed there are a lot of views about the Conrad Black trial, and I've talked to some um, judicial experts in Canada who say if this were Canada, this never would have happened. Um, you may have views about why that is. Are our laws worse or better? Is our procedure worse or better? You have to admit that Conrad Black is very articulate and knowledgeable, and why shouldn't he be in the film? You have a problem with that? <laughs> <laughs> Not me personally. He was very articulate. <laughs> well, and Paul Muhammad, you're right in, in some respects. I mean, we went to... Paul was at Fenbrook Institution, which is up in Gravenhurst, and we went and did quite a number of visits to that place because you, you can't really... Especially in a situation like that where you have, I think, what is a vulnerable subject or... Uh, you, you can't just parachute in and say, okay, tell me your story. <laughs> um, you have to build up a relationship. And we interviewed a number of, of um, uh, inmates at Fenbrook, and Paul it naturally emerged as this incredibly feeling person. And, and he's, he's, he's sort of between a rock and a hard place in some cases. And you wonder, um, you know, this is going to sound very bleeding heart, but pay, he's paying his debt to society, no question, but what debt does society owe him for 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 the life he led that probably put him into a situation that um that caused him or made him commit the crimes that he did which is not to say that those are justifiable in any way and and his victims i mean at the very beginning of the film when we first meet him he is reading a victim impact statement um from the woman that he robbed which is you know heartbreaking uh so that debt is that you know that that balance is out of whack certainly. But when you hear a bit about his life and the way that he grew up, it's not that surprising. I, I think a lot of us, a lot of people out there, see debt as purely a monetary matter, purely a matter of you know I owe so much on my house, on my student loans, et cetera, et cetera. How can we possibly start to sort of change that mode of thinking? Do you think? Exactly. How how can we change that mode of thinking? Um, it used to be handled uh, by religions who would point out that uh, you didn't spontaneously self-generate out of nowhere and uh, you <laughs> you know that you and, and now the biologist you owe your existence to the fact that there's a biosphere with breathable oxygen in it which came originally from plant life you know you, we are connected with everything else on the planet uh, and I hate to break this to you but your atoms are borrowed and sooner or later, you will be paying them back into the bank of the biosphere. So, so things move from form to form much more fluidly than we're used to uh, thinking about. So uh, let, let's just put it in terms of your air, your water, your food. Um, you, you get all of those from somewhere. Uh, and they move in and out of your body. So that is borrowing and lending on the, on the scale of physics and chemistry, which, which I also... The book, certainly, by making all of these different connections, and the film tried to do the same thing, of opening up a space to think about debt in a different way, and to think about those relationships of owing and being owed in a different way. I was a prisoner myself. I don't think prison is the answer, but the concept of people paying a debt to society has largely been lost sight of. I'm by no means innocent. I steal. I buy drugs. I get caught within a couple of weeks and come back to prison for a few years. This, to me, is not paying back. <laughs>